Well, I have a lot of important news to deliver to you today regarding the upcoming uh, peace that uh, is going on in the Middle East. Before I do that, I want to get something out that uh, I usually do at the end, but I'm going to start bringing it to, at the beginning. That is that if you haven't received one of my Tribulation Period Survival Guides, your time, your time is growing short. You need to get a copy of either the free, free version or the paid version, which is a paperback that you can hand to your lost friend or loved one so that they will have this book when the rapture takes place and the tribulation period begins. This world is going to go from natural to supernatural, and it's going to happen in a very short amount of time. And the most important message they're going to have to get is that they need Jesus as their Savior. You know, that's the next thing I want to present. If you don't know the Lord as Savior, your time is running out. You know, the Bible says that during the last days after Israel becomes a nation, that there would be a peace accord with many that is taking place in the Middle East with with a, a number of players. And right now, there's already been three or four that have signed on to this uh, peace accord, this normalization agreement. And there's, from what I'm hearing, it's going to be a, a bunch more. You know, the Bible says that will prelude the tribulation period. In other words, as we are gathering steam for this peace with many, which will be the gateway to the tribulation period, the rapture will take place prior to that, and then we will go into the tribulation period. Now, how long it will be between the two, I don't know, but you need the Lord. If you have not come to, to the Lord and asked Him to save you, you need to make that decision today. And if you, you have made that decision today, go to my website, email me, and let me know that you've made that decision. And on top of that, I want to also remind you to subscribe and hit the notification button so that every time we have a video, you will receive a notification that that video is available. Now, here's the first article I wanted to uh, bring to you, and that is that Mossad head says that Saudi normalization ties are close. It's probably going to take place after the election. And also in the Times of Israel, Trump is predicting a unified family in the Middle East. In other words, he believes there's going to be a lot of nations that are going to come uh, about. In fact, he indicated, and also others are indicating, that once the elections are over and Trump is reelected, that there is going to be a cascading snowball effect, and many things will happen very quickly. Certainly, we've had three or four nations that have come forward and have uh, normalized relations with Israel and have signed peace pacts. And it's been a little bit more than a trickle effect, but from what I'm hearing, it's going to cascade into a big snowball for which many will begin to, especially if Saudi Arabia gets on board very quickly after the elections. Then you can expect Morocco. They're saying Oman will be next. It wouldn't shock me if Qatar was also involved along with Iran and uh, Syria along with, and Lebanon. Don't, don't forget them. Many of these nations are uh, putting out floaters to get involved in this before it uh, commences into this peace with many and that they can also get involved in the lucrative development that's going to take place that I believe uh, will follow. And, you know, here's an article that uh, we probably need to talk about as well. It says, it's from uh, from all places, CNN. It says that Israelis can now travel to Dubai. The Persian Gulf will never be the same. Now, of course, being CNN, they probably mean that in a negative way. But the truth of the matter is, is that the uh, Middle East will never be the same once this normalization hits its plateau. Now, uh, as we know, in, in uh, Daniel 9.27, it talks about a seven-year span. Now, certainly that may be just to let those who are Christians know that the tribulation period is going to last seven years. And then at the midway point of that seven years, that the Antichrist would break his agreement. But it could also be that that seven years is noted and added as a, uh, a finalizing amount of years for Israel to get out of the West Bank, or at least the parts that they have not already claimed, give the agreed-upon amount of land to uh uh, the Palestinians, and to allow them to create their capital somewhere around Jerusalem. And it's very possible that uh, their capital may be a part of Jerusalem. But, of course, I don't believe that God will ever allow that. I think, of course, before that seven years is up, of course, uh, he will be coming back. And uh, I don't believe that, that Jerusalem will ever be given to uh, any of the Arab world. In fact, that very well may be the reason behind Armageddon that Israel refuses to give any portion of Jerusalem to the Arab world or to the world dictators, for that matter. And, of course, that could be what uh, brings about Armageddon, but I think it's more likely that 
the Antichrist will probably say that he wants Jerusalem as his capital. And when he and the armies of the world begin to march upon Israel and upon Jerusalem, that will be when the Lord will come back and he will take and destroy the armies of the world and then seize the Antichrist and the false prophet. And they will be judged and then they will be thrown into the lake of fire. One thing you need to remember, the Antichrist and the false prophet are human. And as we know, the Bible says that it is a point on a man wants to die, then the judgment. You are going to, ju- you, you will be judged. And they will be judged. And there's something else you may not know. The Antichrist and the false prophet will both have to reject Jesus as Savior. They will be, like anybody else here in this world, they will be confronted with the gospel and they will be told that they need Jesus as their Savior and they'll reject it. As will most, uh, everyone who lives here on earth, but the bottom line is we don't really know how many are going to reject Christ. You know, we're always, we've always been led by looking at Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, that most of the world will accept the Antichrist and will worship him, take his mark, accept those who accept Jesus as their Savior. And it's always been given, it seems like, that that would be the majority of people here on earth. I don't know that if that is actually the case. And you know, we really can't say that's the case, but it's, it probably is. Because we know scripture indicates that narrow is the way to life and few there are that travel down that road and broad is the way to destruction. There's a a bunch of people traveling down that road. So I'm not so sure we should take and think that during the tribulation period that the roads are going to get any broader for uh, those who come to know the Lord than uh, those that don't come to know the Lord. And you know, in that same vein, we uh, talking about the Antichrist being human. He will play a part in what the Lord wants to do. And you should not and should never think of him as an adversary to God. Yes, he will exalt himself uh, to be as high as the uh, Lord, which is found in Daniel 8, 25 or 23 through 25. But for the, you know, for the the bottom line is that he's nothing more than the alternate choice of those who do turn down the Lord's invitation for them to know him. Frankly, the Antichrist is simply not needed if, in fact, everybody accepted the Lord as Savior during the tribulation period. But because there will be those uh, on earth who will reject Jesus as Savior, God will create their alternative, which will be the Antichrist. And he will send Satan to uh, select the very person that God has already chosen. Then the Antichrist will play his part in deceiving the world. Uh, God will send strong delusion so that those who have rejected Christ will believe his lie, and that lie being that he is the Savior, he's the Messiah. And they will take his mark and they will worship him. And you can see by just me saying that, this is going to be a very different world than what we live in right now. Can you imagine somebody getting on TV right now and say, hey, I'm I'm the Messiah. You need to worship me. You need to take my mark. And you can you imagine then saying, yeah, I'm going to worship him and I am going to take his mark. Well, today I can't see that happening, but uh, with the strong delusion that God will send, it is absolutely possible. We're going to think, those people are going to think totally different than they think today. I mean, sure, there are a lot of people in this world today who have rejected Christ, but the bottom line is, I don't know if there's any man alive today that uh, is being worshipped by uh, individuals. Now, of course, you've got your cults out there that... Uh, Think crazy, but the bottom line is is that they're far and few between. This Antichrist will be sent into the world to fool the masses and to deceive the masses. And everybody who does not accept Jesus as Savior will worship him. Not an individual here and there, not a cult. It will be everybody, from the greatest to the smallest. Now, with that said, what are we looking for right now? Well, right now we're looking for the gateway to the tribulation period, and that being What's going to happen with this peace with many? And a lot's, like I said, I've I've been told that a lot is going to be unfolding quickly as soon as President Trump is reelected. I do believe he will be reelected. Now, certainly that's not a prediction. That's not a a message from God because uh, I'm, I'm a man just like everyone else. But my feeling and what I've seen and heard from others, I do believe that he is on his way to victory. And, you know, somebody asked me the other day, do you think President Trump is going to turn out to be the Antichrist? So I don't know. I don't know who's going to turn out to be the Antichrist. He very well may or he may not be. That's not for me to say. But as of today, he's running for president. He's given me four good years. He's he's moved the U.S. embassy to uh, Jerusalem. He's given back the Golan Heights. He has built the wall. 
He's lowered unemployment to as low as 3.5 before this pandemic. He's brought about prison reform, drug reform, and I believe he's got a ton of other things to do once he is reelected. And uh, like I said, whatever he turns out to be in the future is is uh, up to the Lord. But right now, he's been a very he's been a very good president, and that is who I would uh, definitely endorse and recommend that you vote for in about nine days. Yeah, that is if you are an American citizen right now. That's what we're thinking on here in America, and certainly as uh, we can see that. So whoever becomes the president, it's going to affect the entire world. And, you know, for us that are Christians, I forgot one other thing that he did. He is in the process of committing to confirm another uh, Supreme Court justice. And he's electing lower court judges that will keep our Constitution front and center and keep the socialist mandates of the far left far away. So that's something else that we as Christians need to think about, is that if you are a Christian... You need to help get the curse of abortion off our backs. This ridiculous notion that you won't vote for a president who's done a fantastic job because you don't like the way he tweets or you don't like his tone of voice or that sometimes he can be mean, that is just totally ridiculous. If nothing else, as a born-again Christian, you need to vote for President Trump because he has done what he said he would do. And our, our number one goal isn't for him to be in office. Our number one goal was to elect a president that would change the face of the Supreme Court so that we could get this scourge of abortion out of our nation, or at least limit it so much that it's almost non-existent. And I believe that that's, that's happening. So, I, you know, I just want to give you that to think about. And uh, uh, that's my report for today. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.